Next on Newsmax Prime, a lack of intelligence? Serious consequences with the evaporation of information for our troops in the field. Pete Hoekstra and Claire Lopez take a closer look. Then, Alan Dershowitz and Rick Unger on an unlikely alliance that could emerge in the Middle East. Plus, the battle of the brands. Bush versus Trump. Who has the upper hand? Branding expert Mark Rudolph evaluates the early going for 2016. And Newsmax Prime starts now. Good evening and welcome to the Wednesday edition of Newsmax Prime. I'm J.D. Hayworth. Two stories of prime interest tonight. One, conspiring with ISIS. A Staten Island man taken into custody today after coming after FBI agents with a knife. Now this comes after the FBI arrests a college engineering student whom they say wanted to detonate a pressure cooker in New York. But first... A report out today says U.S. Army Green Berets ready to battle ISIS in Iraq have been hampered by poor intelligence. Miranda Khan has more from our Newsmax Prime newsroom. Miranda? J.D., that report in the Washington Times references an Army internal memo showing just how bad the state of our intelligence gathering is in Iraq. The memo was written in late 2014 by the commander of the 1st Special Forces Group, a Washington-based command of about 1,400 Green Berets and military support personnel as it prepared to deploy commandos to Iraq. The memo states that when U.S. forces exited Iraq in December of 2011, quote, all theater-level enterprise databases were terminated. Intelligence was so limited, U.S. Special Operation Forces in Iraq were forced to track a wide range of intelligence reports on individual laptops and shared drives. That seven-page memo is an indictment of sorts of our field intelligence capabilities nearly 14 years after the 2001 terror attacks. Now, California Congressman Duncan Hunter has pressed the head of U.S. Special Operations Command to improve intelligence for commandos sent back to Iraq. Hunter, a former Marine officer, says the Army's internal intelligence network has numerous flaws and has pushed the Army to provide other proven commercially available networks to the troops. The report states that the U.S. left the Iraqi Army equipment to store ground intelligence data, but, quote, no U.S. storage facility exists for this information and that the data is kept only in Arabic. J.D.? Thanks, Miranda. And for more on this story, let's bring in a pair of people who know whereof they speak. Uh, joining us from Newsmax Washington, intelligence expert Claire Lopez, and also at Newsmax Washington, we're joined by the former chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Pete Hoekstra. Thanks to you both for your time here on Newsmax Prime. Uh, Claire, you heard Miranda's report. Just how bad is our situation in terms of intelligence in Iraq, and will that problem continue? Well, you know, as she said in the report, um, it's tough when you don't have a presence on the ground in, in, the, in the person of troops, of special forces, um, or of, uh, you know, other intelligence operatives. Uh, when that goes away and when our troops are withdrawn, uh, so do the intelligence collection capabilities. Now, uh, the, the other part about that is that, uh, you know, we can operate out of different places. Um, uh, but, but it's difficult when you don't have the same amount of presence on the ground that we had back then. Uh, Pete, uh, Miranda mentioned that whatever is left in place, uh, all the assessments are written in Arabic. I mean, uh, when we got out of there in 2011, it must have been lock, stock, and barrel. Uh, that's exactly what happened. And the end result, J.D., is, you know, we are blind on the ground in Iraq today. You know, I visited Iraq a number of times from 2003 to 2010. And, you know, I met with Stan McChrystal. I saw what we had, the human intelligence we had, the signals intelligence that we had, the airborne intelligence that we had. We had an integrated system that really gave us ground truth uh, in real time for our troops and for the Iraqi troops. And when we pulled out, we pulled out the signals intelligence, we pulled out the overhead, uh, but most importantly is we left 
our human intelligence, those Iraqis that were partnering with us, we hung them out to dry. So as we now go back in and try to reestablish that, the Iraqis, the people that we need in the ground to tell us what's actually happening, they're not going to partner with us because they saw what we did to the last folks that put their lives on the line to partner with the United States. They're not going to take that risk again. It's absolutely outrageous what we did in Iraq. We took great intelligence and we totally destroyed it and now we got to try to recreate it. Now let me talk about something that is uh, happening in Washington and Pete, uh, you may have institutional knowledge about something like this. The House Intelligence Committee recently voted unanimously to cut as much as 20% of the classified funds flowing into a CIA program that officials said has become one of the agency's largest covert operations overseas with a budget nearly uh, nearing $1 billion a year. Now that operation was funding Syrian rebels. Pete, your take on that vote is it a mistake to cut the funding uh, to that program? Well, again, the uh, I don't. It's a covert program. I don't know the the exact ins and out of this, but I do know what the process is. What that tells you is that most likely the Republicans and the Democrats. This is a unanimous vote, and that's what we s saw quite frequently: Republicans and Democrats working together to keep America safe. This tells you that the people on the committee probably identified that in this case, they, were, they didn't have a high degree of certainty that the CIA and this covert program was actually arming the right people or that they maybe didn't even know who they were arming. This is exactly what happened in Libya. We armed the wrong guys. Wow. It is something, it's like that old saying, uh, to know the players, you got to have a program. Claire, uh, Pete made the point that this is covert, and yet we're getting this report, this gigantic leak of this information about what happened in the Intelligence Committee. Your take on the entire matter. You know, I, I have to echo what, what Pete said about uh, the dubious uh, nature of, of, of the operation as it, uh, you know, was uh, proceeding over the last few years. Once the great purge, as we call it, took place inside the U.S. government uh, between 2011 and 12, our agencies, intelligence community, uh, Homeland Security, FBI, CIA, you name it, were not allowed to know or to speak of the ideology of jihad, Islamic jihad as inspiration for Islamic terrorism. And so when, when the CIA has these training camps inside of Jordan, inside of Turkey, on the borders, you know, with Syria there, how in the world are they supposed to vet uh, the people who are coming through these camps? Well, they can't. They're not allowed to ask them, uh, do you uh, support jihad in support of uh, instituting Sharia Islamic law? And we heard from Jordanian officials who actually went to the media uh, some time ago last year, uh, 2014, and spoke to the media, said that some of the graduates of, of the very programs that, that, that we had set up training camps inside of Jordan had later gone on to join what was then called ISIS, Islamic uh, State in Iraq and al-Sham. Now, Claire, and, you uh, mentioned that situation, and I listened to that, and there are echoes of that going on at home today. For example, news that the college engineering student who wanted to uh, blow up the George Washington Bridge with a pressure cooker was... Uh, was arrested. You had that, then you had another situation, sounded like shades of what happened in Boston with that, uh, that encounter in a CVS parking lot between a Boston cop and FBI agent and someone who identified with ISIS. Pete Hoekstra, what have you heard about today's action and what happened yesterday and what does that portend for our immediate future? 30 seconds. Well, I think uh, the, the arrests today bring, I think, the total number to somewhere near 50 of people that have been arrested and, uh, you know, fairly recently in terms of being aligned with radical, the radical jihadist movement. The threat is alive and well in the United States. Uh, and, you know, congratulations to our law enforcement for continuing to catch these folks, but they're not going to be able to catch them all. The threat is real, and it's here in the homeland. A friendly amendment, the exact total, 52. So, Pete, you are right about that. It is something we will discuss with you both again in the not-too-distant future. To Claire Lopez and Pete Hoekstra, you have our thanks. Still to come, the Obama administration's proposed nuclear deal with Iran is creating a strange alliance between the Saudis and the Israelis. Alan Dershowitz and Rick Unger discuss that and more 
when Newsmax Prime continues.